They gave him a purple cloak and twisted together a crown of thorns. They put these on his head. Hail, King of the Jews, they said, as they struck his head and they spit on him and mocking him, they knelt down to him. After this, they put his clothes back on him and led him out to be crucified. The charges against him that would hang on his cross read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. They brought him to Golgotha, and at the third hour they crucified him and divided his garments and cast lots for them, as it was written. And about the sixth hour there was darkness that fell over the whole land while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Oh, yeah, Dad. Oh, good. After this, he breathed his last. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Truly, this was the Son of God. And on the third day, Mary and others went to visit the tomb. And angels stood before them asking, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, for he is risen. And Jesus walked with the disciples and explained all that the law and the prophets had written of him. And he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. So yes, crucify him, because we needed new life. We needed to be saved. Our sin had condemned us to death. But Jesus made a way for us. That agony would have been ours for all eternity had he not come. But praise God that he didn't just endure the cross. Praise God that he didn't just come to die. He came so that we might live. Awesome. Awesome. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for me to, um, do you know what to do next? Yeah. He's risen. He is risen. And he is, listen, let's be real quiet. Can we hear, um, can we hear the birds? You know, they started talking like this when you started singing. And you ever wonder, you ever think about, what are those little guys are singing about? Do we ever pause to think about it? They're not singing about the problems in the world. They're not singing about taxes. They're not singing about the woes and pandemics and culture. They're singing about the Almighty God risen from the Lord, risen from the dead, our Lord and Savior Jesus. Absolutely awesome. 
Well, church family, we have been going through this series this week, and obviously this morning, we end it with a series of services today themed out of the darkness. And uh, don't tell anybody, but out of all of the services today, you've picked the best one to come to, because, <laughs> because we are literally coming out of the darkness. And um, it's awesome. Father, we pray that by the moving of your Holy Spirit, you would seize us this morning. Father, I would think that on a morning like this, that those who 2,000 years ago ran to the tomb, though they were disappointed, though they were sad, though they were heavy hearted, they ran to the tomb with embalming fluid and thinking that they were going to see a dead body, but they were happily shocked and surprised. I pray that those that are here today, I would assume, are believers, but Lord, what if, what if this morning, Father, you want to cause there to be a dawning in the heart of one man, one woman, one boy, one girl, one family here today, that all of the Bible and all of time and eternity and the cross of Christ and the empty tomb this morning in Jerusalem is to reach that one person because you are the kind of God that would go to such lengths to rescue one soul. And for that, every single one of us are grateful. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, church, obviously, but if you've never studied, it's not so obvious that the most documented historical ancient event in history is none other than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We know nothing in comparison to Aristotle or Plato or the ancient ones who existed. Think about it for a moment. We know nothing factually. Nobody denies the existence of Abraham. But what we get out of antiquity, we have staked the claim that it's enough. None of you have met George Washington. And yet you don't doubt his existence. But there's more books, there's more authorship, there's more writing, there's more eyewitness accounts of the life of Christ, both his friends, his foes, and the undecided, than any other person in all of human history. And you need to sit up and take notice of that today. The Bible tells us, and I'll read it to you, but can you stand for a moment? Wait, you're all comfortable, it's okay. You're all good. And you're warm. I see some of you all cuddled up. By the end of this message, you'll all be cuddling up. This is a, a Southern California winter, it feels like right now. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 28, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn. I'm watching it happen right here today as the sky is turning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was like or white as snow. He and the guards shook for fear and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus whom was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with great fear and great joy. And they ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. I believe that today, if you're willing to open up your heart and your mind, you'll see the reality of Jesus Christ and that God has announced, especially in this dark world, that God has announced to us that there's hope, there's life, there's forgiveness, 
because God has promised this in his holy word. Remarkable. By the way, a little bit of background to this morning, 21 centuries ago, celebrated, by the way, yesterday, if you think about it, on Saturday, the Bible tells us in the Gospels that on Saturday, there's only one verse that covers it, and it's Luke chapter 23, verse 56. Pay, pay close attention to this, everybody. Luke 23, 56 says, and they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. That's exactly what a Jew was supposed to do for a departed loved one or friend, was to saturate their grave cloths with beautiful, fragrant spice oils and perfumes for burial. It's your last attempt to express your love and your commitment and your joy for knowing that person. So keep that in mind. On Saturday, celebrated yesterday, the disciples, especially the women, they're preparing spices. First of all, according to the law, they were not supposed to do that at, at all. They're supposed to be keeping the Sabbath. They're not to be working. They were good, kosher women preparing these spices. But something drove them beyond the law. Something drove them beyond what Moses had said, you shall do nothing on this day. They blew that off. What drove them but the love and the devotion for Jesus Christ? I think God was pleased with that form of so-called disobedience. Weren't you? Aren't you impressed by that? I'm impressed by that. So number one, church, as we look at this this morning, out of the darkness, Jesus Christ brings the real reason to life. When Jesus Christ rose again from the grave, he said a grand exclamation point, as it were, and he made the announcement that life in him cannot be stopped. Life in him cannot be shut down. That when Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, what he brought out of the darkness was eternal life. And it's exactly, if you're honest with yourself, it's exactly what you want to know. Eternal life is exactly what you want to experience. It's not just because you have been either coerced or bribed. Maybe somebody bribed you with hot chocolate this morning or <laughs> breakfast after this. Down deep inside, no matter what your worldview might be, you want to live forever. That's why death is such a horrific thought and such a grand interruption in your life. You want to live. An atheist wants to live. Why is that? Because God has put that in your heart. And when Jesus rose again from the dead, he rose bringing us the great reason of why we should love life and embrace life. Right here, the Bible says, we read it a moment ago, that in Matthew 28, verse 1, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, boy, you can read later about her life, and the other Mary came to see the tomb. They didn't even show up to see Jesus. They were coming to see the tomb with hopes that maybe they could find somebody to roll away the stone. Did they believe that he was resurrected from the dead at that moment? The answer, no. But did they go out of devotion to pay their respects to the dead? Yes. Have you ever been, of course you have, to a funeral, the death of a loved one, how wrong it feels? The death of a loved one, a child, a parent, a husband, a wife, a friend, it's such a grand interruption. And you experience that gathering and there's a heaviness and there should be, and I understand that. But as I mentioned on Good Friday, we know something. On that day that Jesus was crucified, what you and I need to remember to appreciate is that this morning was coming. God had announced it. God had prepared for it. God had put forth his word. But just note this. If you're a skeptic this morning, and if you had, have doubt in your heart and mind, just know this. The very ones who traveled with Jesus went to the tomb that morning to pay their respects because they thought he was still dead. But when Jesus Christ came out of the tomb, he brought forth the real reason to live. Suicide is sweeping our nation, and it's unnecessary. Think about it. You know, I, I 
of course I'm with you on this one, but I'm, I told some friends just before this service while worship was going on, I said, you know what should be happening right now? And this is by no means self-serving to any one of us, but in the condition our nation is in right now, that is people losing their lives unnecessarily, that if people really cared, you would think that Fox and CNN and NBC, they would have set up cameras here right now. They would have said, you know what, we'll try it. Resurrection Sunday morning, we'll stream this service across the nation. Why? It might save a life. Think about that for a moment. To hear the fact that Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, and when he did that, he brought forth a great reason for you to live. Young people need to hear that today. In Mark chapter 16, verse 1, the Bible says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices that they might come and anoint him, Jesus, his body. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, Sunday morning. So they came, listen, with spices. They came with wrecked emotions, no doubt about it. They came with tearful, maybe... Eyes puffy from crying over the weekend, over what they had witnessed at the cross. They came with broken dreams. Their lives were wrapped up in Jesus, and now he's gone. They came with questions on their lips, no doubt, and with great confusion in their minds. Listen, friends, if you find yourself ever in that situation, and in life you will, it's never a good time in such a moment to make decisions regarding your life until you find out that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and that he gives the answer to life. Don't do it. Don't make a decision on anything regarding your life until you understand that the God who made you is the God who died for you and rose again from the dead. In a word, they came to the tomb filled with hopelessness, but boy, were they in for a shock. After all that Jesus had said and done with them, after everything they had heard and seen, in their minds, he was gone. There was no hope, but hope was about to invade them. They didn't realize that Jesus had come out of the dark. Number two, Jesus Christ brings the real answer to, listen, spirituality. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. The data is there where Church, look at my fingers, church in America is dying as we traditionally know church. Now, I'm looking around right now, and it doesn't look very dead here. Why? Because, because you, listen, you know that church can't save you. You came here to celebrate a risen Savior. But listen, because the church on the surface is dying in communities... Notice what people have done. Again, especially young people. They have gravitated towards spirituality. And they will. It's nothing new. God made you a spiritual creature. And when you don't know Jesus, you'll go to something. And there's been a great resurgence in the world right now of Satanism. And I'll just say this. People are searching. And when you think about them gravitating to new age and all this kind of bizarre, esoteric type of thinking. It's a spirituality. And the culmination of all attempts to be spiritual leads to that very one called Satan. And people today are losing hope, and so they're gravitating towards Satanism. There's all kinds of stuff going on right now. And by the way, in the United States, there's a tremendous move, and it's been going on, where... Satanic churches are being started across the United States. And that's strange to us, but it's not strange to the reality that down deep inside, you're spiritual. You've got a spiritual hunger inside. And in Matthew 28, verse 2, the Bible says, Behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, you want spiritual? Check this out. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the dead, or from the door, excuse me. I love the angel rolled back the door. The angel rolled back. Well, Jesus was already gone. Jesus didn't roll it back. The angel rolled it back. Don't think for a moment, well, the angel rolled it back so Jesus could get out. Jesus was not on the inside going, oh, man, come on. <laughs> 
Can you imagine orchestrating all this? Okay, you know, the heaven's got headsets on and microphones. Okay, cue angel. Do have angel descend. Jesus, are you ready? Ready. Okay, angel. Now, lightning strike, earthquake, move, roll stone. He was already gone. He didn't need that stone rolled away. The angel rolled the stone back so Peter and John could run in. He rolled the stone back so history could record that Christ is risen from the dead. It's absolutely awesome. But the verse goes on to tell us that after he rolled back the stone from the door, he sat on it. I just love that. I, I would have written it this way. He rolled back the stone and sat on it while folding his arms. He might have even had a toothpick in his mouth. It's awesome. His countenance was like lightning. Can you imagine? Just and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards, that's the Roman guards, secular Roman guards, secular history. The Roman guards shook for fear and became like dead men. They were just absolutely overwhelmed and overtaken. The third thing is this, out of the darkness, Jesus Christ brings the real mission to our lives. Now, i got to control myself and keep true to the clock on this one. My dear friends, family, listen, all of you together, it would probably go over better in this crowd than any other. But until you know, if you know, a mission for your life that's been given to you by God, you have yet to live your life. Young people today, listen, you do not have a mission to live your life unless you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, pastor, I'm going to be a doctor. Go ahead and be a doctor. By the way, be a good one. <laughs> I'm going to go into the Air Force. Okay, God bless you. Do your best. I'm going to be, fill in the blank. Be your best. But listen, the Bible tells us that God has put eternity in your hearts, our hearts. And the truth is this, that a mission... For your very existence as a human being has been given to you by God. And if you don't know what that is, then you're going to be bouncing off the walls in life, going from one course to one degree to one classroom to one career, all to the other, like an absolute pinball machine. Are there pinball machines anymore? Some of you know what I'm talking about. And you wake up at the age of 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 and you're going to ask yourself the question, what's this all about? You don't have to do that. Jesus rose again from the dead and he gives us a mission that's eternal. You can do all those things to put food on your table, but that's not the reason why you were born, my friend. And young people need to hear this more than ever. There's a mission for your life. Find out what God's purpose is for your life and see what will happen. Life should be a white knuckle experience. I mean that in a good way. Do you remember what that means? White knuckle, the terrifying roller coasters. I don't go, I don't do roller coasters personally. I, I love airplanes and all that kind of stuff. I can trust that. But a roller coaster, some guy put that thing on a piece of metal and, and it's man-made design thingy, and, he, and it's going to stay on? I just, I don't know. I'd rather be in an airplane where it's sitting on a bunch of molecules of air. <laughs> but we talked about white knucklers, you know? Life should be like that as a Christian in a good way. What's going on, Jack? I don't know. I'm just hanging on to Jesus. It's amazing. <laughs> People ask me, how you doing? I always say this. Fine, the last time I checked. The key is, don't check. Just hang on. Your Christianity should be absolutely radical. The days are dark. Oh, look what's happening. Oh, it's terrible. Let's move out of California. Wait a minute. I'm announcing to the world right now. You ought to move to California. It's crazy. It's a beautiful kind of crazy, but it's crazy. There's a great war going on. And we have a mission. It's to share the love of God, that God forgives, God saves. The cross, he died. The tomb, he rose. And this is the epicenter, in my opinion. Of course, I think so. 
God has sent me to this part of the world, as it were, for a mission, you as well. Number four, Jesus Christ brings the real thrill to being alive. When Jesus told the disciples, come and follow me, wouldn't you love to interview Matthew? Remember Matthew? Matthew sitting there, he was, a, he was hated by the Jewish people because he was a Jew, but he was working for Rome, and Rome wanted a certain amount of tax. If it was a certain percentage, if they said, we want 10% of every person going through this highway right here, Matthew was allowed to charge any percentage over that and keep the rest. Did you know that? Uh, tax collectors were hated in Israel. <laughs> They're hated in California too. Nothing personal. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as he's collecting taxes, the Bible doesn't tell us only this, that Jesus walked by and said, come and follow me. And I love that because, you know, Matthew's sitting at a toll gate. Did Jesus pay? Doesn't say he paid. He probably did because we know in the Bible that Jesus paid other taxes. He actually, except he had it made. He told Peter, go down to the beach. <laughs> Wouldn't that be, go down to the beach and grab a fish. And I don't know, you squeeze them, a coin comes out and go pay our taxes. It doesn't say anything about that regarding this moment. But Matthew's there and Jesus just says, come follow me. And the Bible says Matthew dropped what he was doing and followed Jesus. What an amazing moment. And I would love to interview Matthew. Someday you and I are going to talk to him. And I want to ask him, what was going on? Did you even look up? Did you, what, what happened when you heard him say, come and follow me? I wonder what he'd say. Well, I, I thought, first of all, some guy was just blowing through the gate and being silly. And he just kept walking, by the way. But he turned back and he looked at me. And when he looked at me, there was an incredible thrill that what he was communicating to me is beyond taxes. It's beyond wealth. It's beyond Rome. It's beyond myself. And I followed him. What a tremendous thing. The Bible says here in verse 7, and go quickly, said the angel, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. The greatest absolute announcement to this moment and forever will be, my friends. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And that fact is laid out and the world has got to deal with it. It's a fact. Christ rose again from the grave. Our faith is founded upon fact, not some dream. Oh, you Christians in your blind faith. Blind faith? Our faith is based upon the fact recorded in the scripture. It's absolutely awesome. By the way, have you noticed that people say, oh, I can't be a Christian, man. I'm a per I believe in science. <laughs> and I've told you before, if you go to this church, science is awesome because number one, it comes from the same author that wrote the Bible. The second thing is this. Science is God's way of telling you how things work. Science cannot tell you why. Science cannot tell you why it was given. Science tells you how it works. God tells you why he gave it. God tells you, I gave this that you might know me, that you might have glory in seeing these beautiful things. The bird singing, think about that. Explain that to me scientifically. Well, back in the primordial, <laughs> primeval world, really? No, listening to Christianity should be thrilling. You should not walk into a college classroom and hide and apologize that you're, that you're a Christian. You should take on the class. And when they seek to make fun of you, you should say, excuse me, what's your explanation for the existence of life? How do you explain the order of things? And why is it? If you say, I don't know if I could do that. How about this one? This is simple for everybody. Ask your professor or your classmates. Ask your neighbor. Do you believe and have you ever thought about life after death? And they're going to be, they're going to say yes if they're honest. And you need to press that. Why did you think that? Why are you thinking that? Why do you care? What happens after you die? They're going to have an opinion. 
And then you say, Jesus said, if a man were to die believing in me, yet shall he live. You can do it. I pray that this year more than ever, as this world shakes, this is our year. Man, look, I believe Jesus could come back at any time. I, I told Lisa last night, we were praying, and I said, Lord, may this be the last Easter service we ever do. Now, you might say, Pastor, speak for yourself. Okay, that's fine. May it be the last one I ever do, if you're here or not. <laughs> so how could you talk like that? Because he's risen from the dead. Can you imagine you're here freezing right now? If I fell off of this stage and landed on my head and went to heaven, it'd be like 80 degrees right there. You'd still be here freezing. The Bible says to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Your life should be, listen, absolutely thrilled. That verse goes on to say, so they went out quickly. I love that. That's us. We are to go out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. The word fear is awe. Woo! Awe. Like, should we get excited totally? Do we, did we really hear that? Could, was the angel maybe fibbing with us? They went out and they told the disciples. Now, this gospel doesn't record it, but when the women showed up, <laughs> I'm sorry, but when the women showed up to the disciples, the Bible says the 12 guys were hiding. <laughs> they were hiding for fear, it said. Can you imagine Peter looking through the blinds? What do you see? A bunch of women in the street. They're coming this way. Do they look angry? And the women came busting in and said, we've been told that Jesus has risen from the dead. And when we saw him, we full on tackled him and hung onto his feet and we were holding him. And the Bible tells us in another gospel that the words of the women sounded like fables and the disciples did not believe them. The great men of God. You women, what? You guys have been all talking. How long have you been up all night talking about this? By the way, guys, I think that's something within us. When the women show up to tell us what happened, we're like, what? Say, what, what were you saying? <laughs> That's a problem of ours. It's a, I don't take full responsibility totally. I lay a lot of that on Adam personally. When, when Lisa says, were you listening? Huh, what? I'm a, I'm a son of Adam. And, uh, but the fifth thing is this, everybody. The fifth thing is this, and it's the final thing. Out of the darkness, Jesus brings the real comfort for our lives when he rose again from the grave, you stop and you think about that for a moment. When he rose from the grave, he brought absolute comfort. Stop and think for a moment. Put yourself in their sandals. Jesus has risen from the dead. What does this mean now? He shattered the grave. He broke it. What does it mean for us? We've got to talk to him. We've got to find out what is this? The tomb is empty. All of the religious founders of the world today, you can visit their famous sites. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, you know what? If you're a socialist, a communist, I've been there. Lenin's tomb is enshrined in Red Square, Moscow, Russia. I've seen him. Lenin is laying there dead. Let's, do, let's, follow their, let's follow their teaching. They're dead. <laughs> Why would you follow a dead guy? Think of that. Jesus Christ is the only one who says, come and follow me. And then, yields up his life on the cross for our sins, your sins and mine, he died in our place because you see, all of us are condemned by our own sins. He died 21 centuries ago, but for every reason why he died here in the 21st century, you can say right now, I'll have to agree. The Bible says he died for our sins. Now, theologically, this is an absolute fact. 
If Adam and Eve would have had one child and one child only, Jesus Christ would have died for the three of them. Did you know that? That's a theological fact. Now, see, we, we have a hard time with that because can one life be that valuable? According to God, the answer is absolutely yes. You have a hard time believing that because you don't understand. You've been told to, help, to have self-esteem, and that's a sign to your emotions, and that's whimsical, and it's very unpredictable. It's kind of like giving somebody candy for dinner. But when God says, you're valuable to me, and I love you with an everlasting love, and therefore I'm drawing you to myself, I want you to come to me as you are. Oh, but I'll clean myself up first. No, 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 no. God says, no way. I won't accept it. Were you here Friday night about the thief on the cross? He did... He didn't even get to wash his hands. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He doesn't want you to clean yourself up because that's impossible. Now look, you can say, that's rude. No, you could also say, that's awesome. Are you kidding me? Jesus said that I can come just as I am? Yep. Here's the great thing though. Listen up, everybody. Jesus said that you can come just as you are. Why? Because he's not going to leave you like that. He'll change you, and he'll fill your life with meaning and with hope, and the answer to the deep spiritual yearning of your heart, and he'll bring comfort to you. I was asked recently on a podcast, tell us about your day. What do you do in a day? In fact, have you guys ever, uh, have you guys ever followed or wa watched the Babylon Bee? If you don't follow the Babylon Bee, you got to do that. So I was being interviewed by the Babylon Bee. And the, the guy asked, um, what, do you, you know, what do you do? Do you golf? Do you, what's your hobby? What's your sport? What's your thing? What, what, how do you spend your time? And I said, you know, as a pastor, and I think he felt sorry at first, and, but don't, you don't do that. Hang on for a second. I said, as a pastor, much of my time, I'm very often alone. See, that's why when we get together, you say, man, the guy's been talking for like an hour. <laughs> that's because I haven't talked hardly at all all week. I've been alone. Listen, I've been alone with the Bible, with notebooks, books, and Jesus. Listen, but I was never lonely. Did you get that? The world without Christ is terrified about being lonely. And they think being alone is a great, great danger. Listen, for the Christian, being alone is where we're strengthened. Do you know the comfort of that? Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Great comfort. And so verses 9 and 10, we end with that. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. Rejoice. What a word. Jesus says it to us today. Rejoice. So they came and held them by the feet and worshiped him. That's very cute, you know. Those women, you could see them doing it. I mean, it's like, I'd love to see that in slow motion. They're running. You know what? You know why they did that? Basically, I believe they were announcing, you got away once. <laughs> we're not letting you go again. That's how he is. Do you know him like that? The beautiful thing is Jesus, the Bible, Old and New Testament alike, says that anyone who will come to me, I will in no wise turn away. Isn't that awesome? Absolutely beautiful. Verse 10, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. That should have been the banner verse for COVID season. Don't be afraid. So what? Why? Why? Don't be afraid. Jesus is risen from the dead. Yeah, but there's COVID. Jesus is risen from the dead. Yeah, but you know what? True story. Saw it yesterday. Dr. Fauci said there may be another pandemic early in early to mid 2024. <laughs> Let's just, let's just plan them now. Put that on the calendar. 
Let me tell you, you can put something on the calendar today. You don't need to be afraid anymore. What could happen? Well, as a believer, you could die. You don't need a pandemic for that. Listen, you could die today. But as a believer, you don't die. Jesus said, if a man dies believing in me, he lives. Woo! Man, no wonder why we're supposed to rejoice. So friends, listen up. The Bible tells us, go tell my disciples to head to Galilee and there I will see them. They will see me. You will, Pastor, if you could produce Jesus right here on this stage this morning, I'll become a believer. For now, that's not how you see him. Believing is seen. And I don't know how to put it, but many people in this gathering know exactly what I mean. We don't need to see him because he's that close. He's that close. In a sense, for me to see Christ, I'd have to look inside my soul. He's there. He's with me. He's never, never going to abandon me. He said, if you'll come to me, I'll never turn you away. So I'm going to ask you in a moment to make that decision right now. Here's the part where you get all nervous. Here's the part. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. In a moment, if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, you're going to say to yourself, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to invite you to get up and I'm going to invite you to come forward and you are going to say, I need to do this, but I'm not going to do it. I want you to know the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and you're fighting with him. And Jesus would say, come, follow me. Come and follow me. Before I give that, and I want you to have that just settling in your soul right now in a moment, I'm going to ask you to admit and agree with God that you and I are sinners and that you need his saving grace and that you are going to give, his, give your life to him because he's worthy. He's the one that made you, you know, all these years he was the one that was supposed to be calling the shots, but you've been calling the shots and he's asking you today to quit that. So I'm going to ask you, and I think this is going to happen on the screens as well. Is there going to be a QR code? Do you see that yet? I'm going to ask people to come forward, but for all of you, if you decide or not, but listen, I don't want you to wimp out. There's a QR code that we want to give those of you who come forward or those of you who can see this if we put that up. But you need to make a decision right now for Jesus. Today's the day. Friend, you don't have any guarantee of tomorrow. Do you understand? So let's bow our heads, and I'm going to ask nobody to move around. This is a holy moment. Father God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would move across this pavilion this morning, and Lord, that you would touch every heart. Lord, every soul is important, and I, I have to remember that myself. Every soul is important, from the oldest here to the youngest. And I'm not singling out any particular group, but dear God in heaven, my heart is burdened for the young people today who have no hope, they've got no answers, they've got no purpose, they've got no passion, they've got no meaning, they've got no life, that today, God, you would storm the castle of their mind, storm the castle of their soul, and love would knock down that door. And on the other side of that door, love would open it up, that that person would say, Jesus, come into my life. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed today. Number one, we'll speak of two groups this morning. Number one, if you are willing to admit to God that you have sinned and that Jesus is your Lord and Savior now, that you want him to save you from your sins and write your name in his book of life, and that if you die today, you'd go to heaven. I'm going to ask you to express that physically. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand wherever you're at, or better yet, just for time's sake, let's just cut straight to the chase. As Gia plays this song, if God is speaking to your heart, get up and come forward and stand right up front here. And don't turn to your friend and say, I'll go if you go. Everybody walks through the valley of the shadow of death alone. 
Everyone must open this door to Jesus alone. As we sing this song, if God is speaking to you, you get up and come forward. Secondly, if today you're a Christian, but today's the day you're recommitting your life, you're coming back to the kingdom of God, please understand this. You're not coming back to this church. You're coming back to the kingdom of God. That's a big difference. You don't need a church. You need Jesus. As we sing this song, don't be a coward. The Bible says the first group, in the book of Revelation, the first group of people that enter hell are cowards. Wow, don't do that. If God is speaking to you, if you have an uneasiness in your gut, that's him saying, get it right, accept my son. And you do that by coming right now together. Come, and we'll pray together. Right now, we're going to pray together, right? And church family, listen, if still, if there's anybody even who want to dedicate their life, rededicate their life to the Lord, you come running. But right now, we're going to pray. Those of you out there, speak it with them. It's awesome. Let's let the birds have some uh, rivalry here as we worship and praise God with this. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning and I ask you to resurrect my life from sin. I ask you to forgive me because I proclaim today Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior risen from the dead and I receive him now. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said,